Thank you. Good day. Minister Lim Heng Kiang, I'm sorry if I'm having a little difficulty. Minister for Trade and Industry, Singapore. Mr. Chu Chao Ben, Singapore co chair. Mr. Guillermo Luchango, thank you for your really inspiring words. Mr. Tony Chu, members of the business community of Singapore and the Philippines, members of the delegation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The first question any government asks itself is what we would like to achieve. Vision is a prerequisite for good leadership. And I think that despite the many different paths towards its fulfillment, every nation aspires for one thing, that is the betterment of the lives of its people. Yesterday, I met with your business leaders inside the Fullerton and learned that it was once a post office building. But rather than let it fall into disres disrepair and neglect, you have transformed it into one of your country's prime hotels. Seeing what was done with the Fullerton inspired me. It made me realize, in a sense, a how to describe what my job entails. I see myself as a sort of building administrator, tasked to look after a building in a sad state of disrepair. I lead a nation that has for so long been neglected. My job is to fix the things that need fixing so that the building, my nation, may perform to its fullest capacity and my people may live better lives. The challenge then is to find the things that need to be fixed, the need to redesign, retrofit, and enhance the building while the occupants continue to use it, while at the same time making their occupancy more comfortable while re reconstruction is ongoing. Simply put, this means making sure that no one goes hungry that the welfare of the people is treated as a priority, that each citizen is granted the opportunity to fulfill his potential and no one gets left behind. This is not an impossible, impossible feat. Your nation has shown the world that good leadership translates into progress. We intend to join your ranks amongst developed nations. The next question then is, how will we do it? Growth rates are a clear indication of how far into the path of progress a nation has gone. My nation has been held back in this path due to wrong governance. I am committed to addressing the challenges that have hampered our growth for quite some time now. To extend my metaphor, redesigning the building of state means redesigning the culture of governance. I was elected president based on a platform of alleviating poverty by curbing corruption, and I intend to abide by this principle. Reforms have been set in the military where faulty procurement practices have robbed our soldiers of decent equipment and dignified living standards. In the judiciary where the lady justices scale have tipped toward the privileged few. And all across the bureaucracy where a lack of integrity and competence has been the norm rather than the exception. We are likewise addressing the challenges rooted upon a lack, lack of infrastructure that will make the Philippines a more attractive investment destination. In other words, this means retrofitting efforts to existing challenges in order to come up with solutions. My administration is pursuing its thrust of greater cooperation between the public and private spheres. And by the end of this month, we expect to bid out five public-private partnership projects as testament to our willingness to engage and empower the private sector. There is renewed optimism and enthusiasm among our people and the government. For instance, our Department of Public Works has committed to concreting all national roads by the end of my term, while at the same time saving at least 10% of each year's budget. We are also in the process of expanding, expanding handling capacities of a number of our airports in the country in order to accommodate what we expect to be an influx of tourists and business travelers in the country. This will include increasing the capacity of the airports in Cebu, Bohol, and Palawan. And if I may add, we had an increase of 500,000 tourists from a base of 3 million that has been there for decades upon decades. We expect, in spite of the fact, rather, in spite of the fact of the hostage crisis and the various travel advisories that went against us, we expect this year to be even better. And to go back to my original analogy, this, all of this means enhancing what we already have in order to make the steps we are taking more potent. There is likewise the challenge of using the meager resources at our disposal 
so that we can meet our goal of a progressive Philippines sooner rather than later. Your own water reclamation facilities serve as an inspiration to us in this regard. You were faced with a seemingly unsolvable problem. How to provide water for all your needs with so little to work with? Other people might have cursed their luck or given up, but you persevered. You committed to a vision nurtured by an economy that could fund the necessary structures. You refused to be victims of circumstance, and you overcame. Thank you for setting an example for us. The inefficient use of resources has added on to the leakages, added on to the leakages due to corruption has robbed our people of services and opportunities. In the past eight months, we passed a national budget on time for the first time in the past 11 years. Our Department of Budget and Management has generated more than 215 million pesos in funds by terminating more than 10 agencies and programs that were no longer delivering intended outcomes. Already, our efforts are bearing fruit. The Philippine growth rate of 7.3% is its highest in the last 30 years. Continued growth in my country will be fueled by investments that are already coming in from both domestic and foreign sources. In particular, the business process outsourcing and electronics industries in my country promise to take us further on the path to progress. Recently, I was pleased to be informed that we already are the fourth largest shipbuilding industry on a country basis. Other initiatives to improve the business environment in the Philippines are also underway. As I have mentioned, many investors have already expressed interest in our tourism industry. In response to this, we are addressing the restrictions on foreign carriers that have been extant for decades. We are finalizing the details of an executive order that will liberalize the entry of foreign carriers in a way that will not decimate our local carriers for we need these local carriers to address the needs of our overseas workers in case of emergencies such as those happening in the Middle East today. Under this order, we will allow foreign carriers to fly into key destinations in the Philippines. Beyond that, we are also addressing technical and regulatory issues that have been allowed to worsen in the previous decade. This led to the banning of Philippine aviation into Europe and the downgrading of Philippine carriers to Category 2 under U.S. FAA regulations. The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines has been given a year to resolve these issues so that Philippine carriers can resume flights to European destinations and that we will be removed from Category 2 uh, under FAA regulations. Once these bottlenecks have been resolved, we will embark on an aggressive marketing campaign that will brand and sell the Philippines as a key tourist destination in the outside world. My administration is also keen in ensuring that progress is felt by all and not just by those atop the economic ladder. We are committed to ensuring that economic gains down to the majority of our people. In other words, with the redesigning, retrofitting and enhancement, we remain committed to the welfare of the occupants of the building that is our state. We strengthen an existing conditional cash transfer program by more than doubling its budget from 10 billion pesos to 21.2 billion pesos. We have allocated 8.89 billion pesos for 2011, an almost 60% increase compared to the 20 budget, 2010 budget of 5.6 billion for education. This will pave the way for the construction of not less than 11,926 additional classrooms which will ultimately pave the way for a better educated workforce that can power industry. In the past decade, hope has been hard to come by in my country. Even after the overwhelming mandate handed to me in the last elections, there still exist a few naysayers and cynics. For too long a time, my people have been deprived of hope. They birthed, fueled, and supported my campaign resulting in a mandate and a renewed sense of hope and commitment. And now, no one doubts the simple truth that we are addressing the core obstacles towards national advancement. We may face many more challenges, but my country now has a government with a strong mandate and an even stronger commitment to address these challenges. We are here and are ready to reclaim our rightful place in the community of nations. May I go back? to the example of the Fullerton Hotel. It stands tall and proud as a beacon of what can be done. 
You have proven this and we invite all of you to be part of our own reconstruction. Our government has already, I'm oh, sorry, your government has already signified its willingness to help a brother nation reach the same heights that you have reached. I invite therefore the Singaporean business community to take part in this wonderful opportunity as the Philippines rises to the sky. Partnering with us holds both tangible and intangible rewards. It means also a commitment to lifting the lives of a people who only recently had learned how to dream again. I am grateful for the support of the Singaporean government and its private sector in our quest to make it known to the region and to the world that the Philippines is finally on the path towards progress. Thank you and good day.